Welcome fabulous high school math teachers. My name is Cliff Loria and I will be your guide from the math curriculum department to explain ways that you can prep hybrid lesson plans for the partial reopening of our schools. In this video, I will first use the generalized schedule of the hybrid plan as approved by our governing board to illustrate which students will be meeting with you synchronously and which students will be working on asynchronous tasks during each day of the week. Then I'm going to show you a sample weekly lesson template that was created by the curriculum department to help you visualize what type of planning may occur on a weekly basis for these various student groups. And finally, I'll show you a sample weekly plan that I created for Algebra 2 so that you can see how I visualize connecting the various student groups that you'll support each week. Let's start with what your schedule might look like and when and how you will see your students in a synchronous setting versus when they will be expected to work for your class asynchronously. Please note that some site schedules may vary depending on the needs of the site and the number of periods in a day. For the purposes of this discussion, we'll assume a six period day. The first thing to note in this chart are the different colors, blue and pink, which designate in-person synchronously, the blue, or remote synchronous instruction, the pink. As you can see from the chart, you'll meet with every period every day. However, because not all of your students will attend each of these periods synchronously every day, it will take you two days to synchronously meet with all of your students. For example, on Monday morning, you'll meet with your first, second, and third period students who have opted for in-person instruction. While on Tuesday afternoon, you will meet with the remainder of these first, second, and third period students who have opted for full-time remote instruction. Therefore, it takes you two days before you synchronously meet with all of your students from a given class period. One other general thing to note while we look at this chart is that the students who are colored blue are opting to attend school in person, and they're going to be expected to work on the classes that they don't see in the mornings. They're going to be expected to do that work in the afternoons asynchronously. And similarly, your students who are colored and following the pink periods, they're opting to attend school remotely. They're gonna be expected to do asynchronous work every morning for the classes that they won't be seeing in the afternoons. Finally, you will have synchronous contact with each group of students three days a week. So this is similar to a block schedule and I would encourage you to plan your classes the same way you would for a block schedule. Let's now look at the sample weekly lesson template that was created by the curriculum department to help you visualize what type of planning may occur on a weekly basis for these various student groups. So this sample hybrid lesson template is broken into three main sections, a summary section, which is what you see right now, um, an asynchronous teaching section and an asynchronous learning section. So this summary section includes a place for standards and objectives, a place for support materials. And these are things that you might need to create or acquire in order to be ready to deliver a successful lesson. They're teacher support materials. Um, and then a spot for formative assessment information. The synchronous teaching section is broken into two parts. Um, part one is what I call the half and half days, and part two is Wednesdays. So the half teaching in person and half teaching remote days are shown here. And um, the one day where you meet with all your students, which is Wednesdays, will be shown next. So in this first part of these half and half days, you see color coded yellow and green, um, yellow for your Monday, Tuesday and green for your Thursday, Friday. On the left side of each section, you've got space to write objectives for that particular lesson. And then in the associated blank white space, you can write the general parts of your lesson. For example, the opener, the instructional activities, the whole group and independent practice pieces and your closure activity. Also on this template, we've added the four distinct groups of students um, that you teach synchronously over a two-day period. 
We labeled these with the day of the week in AM or PM. Personally, I found this helpful as I was getting my brain um, used to this type of a schedule so that I can more easily remember which group of students I was working with during any given period. Let's look at the second part of the synchronous teaching section, which is devoted to Wednesdays. I like to think of this day as teacher's choice. This is the only day of the week that you see all of your students synchronously for each period. Um, there is also a space here to write the day's objectives. And in this section, you'll notice that there are a variety of suggestions for how you structure your lesson on this day. Um, Perhaps you use this time to do a whole class synchronous activity to continue the new learning for the week. Or perhaps you use this time for a community building activity. Or perhaps you use this time for whole group assessments or for test prep and review. Since the class periods on this day are shorter, you'll need to focus on what's best based um, on the culture of the class and on the needs of your particular students. final section in this weekly template is devoted to the asynchronous learning activities. I like to think of this section as student's choice. So we've organized it as a learning board, which can be used to support a flipped classroom model with preparatory activities that students complete prior to attending their synchronous class period taught by you. Or these could be activities that are used as a reteach or review or as an extension to the in-class synchronous learning that they completed with you earlier in the week. Um, you'll need to set clear expectations for what your students should be working on during those days that they don't meet synchronously with you. This template uh, learning board has five sections. There's a spot for videos. Again, these could be used as a reteach or you could require students to watch and take note on these prior to attending your synchronous class period. There is an independent practice using platform apps. These activities provide students with the opportunity to practice the concepts they learned this week. Ideally, these activities would give feedback immediately to students so they know if they're doing the math correctly or if they need to further review the concepts. There's a section for um, projects and extensions, which could be used to allow multiple response types. Um, or to encourage different viewpoints or allow students to view content through their own cultural learning lens. There's also a section for other sources of independent practice. These would be different than the platform apps. Um, additional places that you, for, for sources for this independent practice can be found on our curriculum maps, TUSD curriculum maps. And then there's a spot for self-check or formative assessments. Um, this could be used to provide data uh, based on pre-post formatives or summatives or student self-assessments um, where students can go to just do a self-check to see if they've mastered what they need to master, if they can stop practicing, if they can move on. And the assessments could vary week to week depending on your pace, the time, um, the data that you need to collect uh, to guide your instruction. Okay, so let's look at a sample weekly lesson template that I created for Algebra 2. Um, when I was asked to create this example plan, it was mid-September. And at that time, we didn't know when we would be returning to school, but it seemed that sometime in the beginning of second quarter was gonna be most likely. So I chose a second quarter highly leveraged standard on applying the remainder and factor theorems. And then I found a supporting standard that kind of went hand in hand with it. I wrote some objectives um, in the order that I would kind of teach it, um, th that standard, those standards. I thought about what kinds of materials would I need as a teacher to successfully deliver this lesson. I would want some PowerPoint slides um, and I would want to build off of something I, that was already created if possible instead of creating it all from scratch. And so I found two Holt lessons um, and I linked the PowerPoints here to our SharePoint site where we have them. I would also want some independent practice um, 
or homework kinds of problems or um, note takers. I think that students would need a computer to do this stuff I'm envisioning because I'm envisioning that I'm going to be um, having aspects of my lessons are similar to what I'm doing now where we're all remote. Meaning if I have students right now writing things in a notebook and keeping paper notes for themselves, um, I would continue to do that. If I've been utilizing the OneNote function of Teams and I have students taking all their notes digitally and I upload PDFs that they annotate over, I would keep doing it that way. So I would probably just continue with whatever system I'd already put in place. Um, and then I found some formative assessments or some places that I would actually go as jumping off points to create my own quick quizzes for the week. Um, and again, these are there are hyperlinks here for you. So I began my planning by laying out the synchronous lessons for these half and half days. Um, so I thought about which uh, objectives I would want to be teaching first. And I thought about how I would kind of organize um, that teaching and what sorts of discussions I would want to have in the class. And so I made some notes here. Um, I would want something for a note taker or for whole group practice, like some problems. And I found a document that I might start with or might pull some things off of and I hyperlinked it. I would want um, students to be able to do some independent practice at some point on this objective. And so I found some IXL skills that I thought paired nicely with it. And then I did the same thing for Thursday, Friday. Um, I just went through again, the, the process and the kinds of things that I would want to do. And, and you notice I've got very general things here. Notes, whole group practice on the remainder theorem. Obviously, I would have slides and I would have a note taker and I would have questions and stuff that go along with that. So let's look at Teacher's Choice Day. Since this is a sample that I'm providing to you, I wanted to give you a sample for each of the different um, various choices. Obviously, you would only pick one thing to do during this 35 minute synchronous remote class period. You would not do multiple things. Um, but if you wanted a whole class activity that related to this week's new learning, maybe you pick a nice synchronous Desmos activity to do. Um, I found one that I kind of liked and I hyperlinked it here for you. Or perhaps you feel like things are going well in this particular week and you don't really need to, to use this class time for um, the actual, the new learning, to support the new learning, but maybe you wanna engage in a community building or in a um, discussion building activity. And you might find a three act task or one of Joe Bowler's week of inspirational math activities. Um, so I hyperlinked our math routine page on SharePoint, which has links to these and other cool um, types of activities like this. Or perhaps you want to use this time to do some sort of a whole class assessment. Maybe you use Desmos, maybe you use School City, or maybe you create a form, or maybe you're doing something in Teams. Um, so I want to just give you some examples, concrete examples for the different kinds of categories. Again, you would only pick one thing to do because it's a short class period. And then let's look at an example finally of how you could choose to set up the asynchronous learning activities for the week. Um, so I broke down each section into like a Monday, Tuesday lesson support or a Thursday, Friday lesson support. And I found some videos that I liked on YouTube. And I also found some videos I liked on Khan Academy. Um, again, I referenced the IXL skills that I would want practiced or have students use for independent practice. Um, if they want additional practice or if they don't want to do the IXL or you don't want them to do the IXL, then there's also Khan Academy had some nice independent practice and um, for both of these standards. And the thing, the reason I picked Khan Academy was because it was, it gave immediate feedback. It gives the answers um, right then. 
And I, that's important to me when I'm assigning independent practice. I always like to provide the answer so that students immediately know if they're doing it right or not, so that they can either um, go ask questions or get help or look at a video if they're getting it wrong, or they can keep going if they're getting it right and they know. I found an extension activity um, that somebody could do if they felt like they had mastered everything, but they still had some asynchronous learning time, um, might be nice. And then I found some places to do some self-check. I wanted to give students a chance to determine whether or not they've got it. I found some quizzes from Khan Academy and also some quizzes, site quizzes, um, that I thought had nice questions and, um, you know, gave you a good sense of whether or not you've mastered these skills. Wow, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Um, thank you so much. And don't hesitate to ask me questions. My email is there on the screen. I want to remind you that the curriculum and instruction along with TS has office hours every Wednesday and Thursday from 2.30 to 5. The meeting ID is there. I'm sure you also receive weekly emails about it. Um, and then I just want to draw your attention to on your Clever page, there's this hot pink button you might not have noticed yet um, icon. And if you push it, it takes you to our SharePoint site for all of the academic platforms that we've got this year um, and who your contacts are in the curriculum department. So I encourage you to check that out when you're looking to ask specific questions on specific um, platforms. Thank you again.